Hi there everyone, it's Bonnie. I hope you guys are having a very good Sunday. It is exactly four o'clock and I'm trying to make sure I start on time so I don't keep you guys too long. I know that it's very nice weather, at least in my area, so some of you may be out and about. I actually spent the day out yesterday. My husband and I went on an adventure because We've been locked in like everyone else, and I'm adjusting this light a little bit. Um, I'm assuming that uh, our moderator, Thomasina Sheely, is on. So, uh, yes, she is. Anyway, so we're going to be making cookies today, and I'll tell you, this is one of my favorite cookies, especially for tea. Many of you may know that I had an N many years ago at a restaurant, and one of the, the favorites as far as desserts were concerned for our IT was this cookie that we're going to be making today. It makes a wonderful, wonderful gift for a nice uh, presentation if you're doing tea for yourself, or in this case, we're heading up to uh, Mother's Day, so I wanted to make sure that I share this recipe with you. I'm trying to let a little bit more time pass before I start uh, so that you get the entire recipe. If for some reason you missed some of it, you, <clears throat> of course, I am going to be uploading this to YouTube. You'll be able to find it there as well as on Facebook for at least a little bit. So, um, anyway, I'm still waiting to see who else is going to come on. Again, I'm won't well, be terribly surprised if we don't get a lot of people because the weather is really nice and I know people have just really been tired of being locked down. Um, so I'll do the recipe anyway and if you um, want to, again, go up and take, take a look at it later, you can always do that. So the name of the cookie that we're making today is called Linzer. It's a, um, a Linzer jam cookie and it's really, really pretty to look at. And as, as I said before, it's very, very easy to make. So I'm going to, Thomasina, I know you're on. Can you tell me if the lighting is okay? Can we see everything all right? That might be a little bit better. Yeah, we can see the table now. I'm going to pull this down just a little bit more. I think that might be perfect. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and get started, and if people come in late, they can always just ask questions, but again, the um, demo will be up. You'll be able to get the recipe and make it later. So to get started, you're going to need, I'm going to go over the ingredients, and they're very, very simple. You need one, uh, actually, you need three cups of all-purpose flour with one quarter teaspoon of, sugar, of uh, salt, as well as... Now, I do a combination of lemon and water, plain water, because you need something that's going to help this, this dough to bind together just a little bit. And so I use a combination of lemon juice and water, fresh lemon juice. And you need to measure up a total of two tablespoons, as well as one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. 
three quarter cups of sugar. And I use, again, the granulated sugar when I'm, uh, the organic granulated sugar when I'm cooking. And you're going to need one and a half cups of unsalted butter. And aside from the dusting of the confectioner's sugar and the jam that you're gonna fill the cookies with, that's it. The ingredients are very, very simple, but you come up with a really, really good cookie. So we're gonna go ahead and get this started. And to get started, first of all, you're gonna preheat your oven to 350 degrees. And then you're going to take your butter and your sugar, and you're gonna add that to your mixing bowl. And you're going to beat that until it comes together. It's gonna to get a little bit noisy. And you're going to pull it together by beating it until it loosens up just a little bit. Now, one thing I did mention is the butter needs to be softened. So maybe an hour or so before you get ready to bake, take the butter out of the refrigerator so that it softens to room temperature. It makes it come together a lot easier. And to that, you're then going to add your vanilla extract. And again, this is a very, very simple cookie, but it is it's just it's heaven. It's really, really good. And you can uh, pick up little kits. They're actually called Linzer uh, cookie kits that has the different cutting uh, pieces. And I'll show you once we get ready to start to put this together. Starts rolling out the dough. And then you're going to add in your flour. And again, we've taken the flour along with a quarter teaspoon of salt. And I always use sea or kosher salt. I don't um, use that other salt. You guys know which one I'm talking about, right? <laughs> so you're going to add the flour in. I'm going to stop this just for a second so you can see what it looks like. And that way you know what the consistency should be. You see that? That's what it should be looking like at this point. We're going to take this back on and we're going to slowly add in the rest of the flour. And you're just going to beat it in enough, uh, just enough for it to come together. We're not making a cake. We're basically making a very, very those of you who have my cookbook, there is a recipe for my lavender cookies. It's very similar to this. Um, it does not have any water. And the reason being, when you add the jam, it does something different to the cookie. So this recipe calls for a bit more flour. And, but anyway, if you don't have my cookbook, you should probably pick it up. It would be a great gift to give to some of you who have a young mom. Who's uh, looking to learn how to cook? And now you're going to add your lemon juice and water and the ingredients are pretty much that's it. And after you do that, when it all comes together nicely, you're then going to take this. Give that a stir just a little bit. This is a really nice dough. And it smells really, really good. You guys know I like stuff that smells good. If it doesn't smell good, it probably doesn't taste good. But you know, the, the first thing you, you do when you're you're getting ready to enjoy a dish, whether it be a cookie or cake or savory dishes, you, aside from looking at it, you start to smell it. And if it smells good, it kind of gets your appetite going. Now, again, you don't want to beat this too, too much because you're going to now take your and this is what it looks like once it's all pulled together. You're going to take this now and you're going to work that dough with your hands. I'm going to start this a little bit more with the um, with my spoon. And you basically at this point want to just make sure that everything binds together nicely. And you're going to take this and put it in the fridge for about 30 minutes. Let's 
so that it can chill a little bit. So you take your hands and you're pressing at the dough. Just like you see me doing here, you're pressing in. It's all going to come together. It'll stick. And the warmth from your hands is also going to help the butter to melt a little bit so that, because um, it's not really that wet, but it's just enough so that you get a nice cookie. So you're going to keep pressing that together, like I'm doing here. You know, the nice thing about this cookie, too, is you can also make this ahead of time and freeze these. Now, you freeze them before you put the jam in the cookie. So uh, I'll show you what it looks like once they're, they're baked off. And at that stage is when you're going to take them and put them in your freezer. So if you're planning some entertaining and you don't want to be tired, you can take a lot of your work and just kind of spread it out. And this is one of those recipes that's really good for this. Um, when we had, um, when I had my restaurant and my bakery, a lot of times we would do that, especially if we had, we would have up to 100 people sometimes to come for high tea. And it's a lot of work because we did the, the tea sandwiches and all of the teas and it was a lot. So we would try to do as much ahead of time as we could uh, for our Sunday high teas. This is almost done. And again, just keep pressing it. And once you do that, I'm going to take this and put it on this board. And you work it with your hands so that all of the flour and the butter and the sugar is molded together nicely. And once you do that, what you're going to do then is you're going to form it into a disc so that once you take it out of the fridge, it's easy to roll out and everything's nice and smooth. It's basically what you're trying to do. See, look at that. And they're coming along nicely. I like, I think I look, I don't know. I love making all kinds of things, but I like baking a lot. Um, I don't do so much, especially around this time of year, because over the winter, I know we put on my couple of extra pounds, which thank God they've gone away. Um, but yeah, so I can't do this all the time because I love, especially bread and cookies. I don't like cakes and pies so much. Um, I'm not a real big sweet eater, but something like this that doesn't have a lot of sugar in it in the afternoon, especially now that my garden is all blooming, I will take a break and go sit someplace in my garden and have tea and cookies and maybe some cheese and not so much the tea sandwiches. Sometimes I do. But um, yeah, so I love tea. And you know the other thing? We, I see a lot of women are talking about self-care these days. You know, if you have nice china, don't say the company, you're the company. Use it. I pull out my nice teacups and I have, I can't tell you how many different patterns of china I have. Like on Sunday mornings, I pull my china out. It's just my husband and myself. And we have a nice breakfast. I set the table with linens. Do that for yourself, especially not mixed. It's, it's amazing the difference that it makes when you when you treat yourself. A lot of people wait until they have a special occasion or they have company to pull their stuff out. Honey, I'm the company. <laughs> I pull my stuff out and I use it. And it just makes me feel valued. Uh, if you don't value yourself, it's hard for other people to do that. So pull out the good china. And um, if you're locked down and you can't see your mom, for whatever the reason, Zoom is wonderful. You guys can have tea. My daughter and I have tea. She lives on the West Coast, and we do tea at least once a week. Most of the time, just sipping a cup of tea and talking, but the fact is, and we did that even before anything like a pandemic happened. We would do that when she was in college, and it just made a world of difference. Now, okay, this is what your disc is going to look like, and then you're going to take that and put it in some plastic wrap, and you're going to chill it for about 30 minutes. You don't want it to get too, too hard, but just enough. So 
so that when you're baking it, if it's not chilled, the butter's not going to melt the way you want it to and have a nice, light cooking. So you need to chill this. Okay, you can take this and put it in the fridge. And if you're planning for next week, what you actually what you could do is you can make this now and keep it in the fridge and then maybe bake, plan to bake on Saturday perhaps, whatever your schedule allows you. But make sure you take it out of the refrigerator well in advance so that it is not real hard to um, to work with. So let me take this stuff and put it off to the side so that we can have already gone ahead and oops. I've gone ahead and made off dough. You know, guys, I do stuff in advance so that we don't have to take so long. Let me wipe this up just a little bit. And here's my cutting board. I'd rather my board that I'm going to be working from. Now, this is a disc that I've already baked some cookies off of. So I saved a little bit so I can give you a demo. You're going to take this, and it's just enough, it's still just enough for me to be able to work with it. You're going to lightly flour the flour board. Now, you're not going to put too much flour on here because you don't want to get a lot of flour in this because then you're going to wind up with a tough cookie. So, don't you like that tough cookie? <laughs> I got jokes. Anyway, that kind of hit me because I've used that expression a lot to describe a woman that you don't want to mess with. So, anyway, you know that expression? She's one tough cookie. So, anyway, I digress. You're going to take this and you're going to roll it out. You want it to be a little thin because you're making a sandwich, basically. And... I don't know if you, yeah, you can see that. I'm going to roll this out. Now, these are your, this is part of a lenser kit. I'm going to pull the entire thing up so you can see. This is the traditional lenser kit. And it has all of these little, see these little cutout things in here? You can do different shapes. You can do hearts. For instance, if you want to do this for Valentine's Day or if you want to do it for a sweetheart. And it has a circle and a diamond, a star, and has a triangle in there. And I'm using this one because it's really cute and it looks like springtime and it's flowers. So, and these are the two main parts. So you have this one here that has all this beautiful lattice around it. And the round one. So what you do is you take your cookie cutter. Let's see if I hope you guys can see this. You're going to cut for each one of these. You need a round one and hold on one second. I'm going to take these guys. You know what? Just give me a minute. You're going to take a round one and then you're going to take this is the top of it. And then the top of it is going to, this is where you're going to do the little cutout for your top of the sandwich. So basically you're going to wind up with two like that, and you're going to bake those off. Now, I'm going to go ahead and finish cutting these off. So you need an equal number of the bottoms and the tops. So I have two there. So I need to do three of these. That's one, two, three. And then you take the little one and you're going to cut out the center because that's where your jam is going to go. It's really cool. So you can use any, any uh, type of shape you like. And you know, I want to tell you, <laughs> I had to go out and buy a new laser kit because, and Thomasina can relate, I did a beautiful wedding for someone who to remain nameless, unless her mom wants to say something, and I left my cookie cutters in California, so somebody's enjoying, <laughs> maybe the woman's house who's, uh, who hosted the wedding because I left my cookie cutters. I was looking everywhere for them, I'm like, okay, when's the last time I made these? And I'm like, ah, I made these as part of my 
dessert offering for the wedding that I did. So anyway, I'm sure they're getting some good news. So I'm going to take this and put it away. So you're winding up with this. And once you do that, you're then going to take it and you're going to place this on a cookie sheet that looks like this. And I've gone ahead and baked these off. And once you take these out of the oven, you're going to let them cool. And then, let me pull them out. You're going to take the tops of them that look like this. You bake them off 350 degrees, and it takes about uh, anywhere from 8 to 10 minutes, depending on how your oven is calibrated. You're then going to take some powdered sugar, and you need one of these little guys here, a little sifter, and you're going to sift the powdered sugar over the tops of these, because these are the tops of your sandwiches, okay? I don't know if you guys saw the picture of the cookies that I posted earlier, and this is what the tops are going to look like. Can you see that? The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your jam. Now, I love raspberry jam. And you take it, and I get the ones, the uh, kind of seedless, because I don't think people like crunching down on seeds, at least I don't. So get the uh, seedless, and if you can't find that, you can then take that same, the little strainer, you can actually take that jam and put it in here and take a spoon and press it, and it will come out like this, and all the seeds will be left in this. Okay. So you take your cookies that have been baked. Now, this is the, the side that was on the cookie sheet. So you're going to take that side and you're going to make that the top. So flip it like that. Then you're going to take jam and you're only going to put it right in the center. Don't spread the jam all over the cookie because what's going to happen if you do that is it's going to just loose out on the side. So if you do just that little bit, little dollop right in the center, and you take your cookie and you press it down and you get a perfect cookie. You guys see that? Now, I was talking earlier about freezing. So if you're going to freeze the cookie, you don't do any of this. You don't dust it with powdered sugar. You take it right out of the oven, let them cool, and then you can put them in a nice airtight container, put them in the freezer, bring them out, and let them get room temperature, and then you're back to the stage where you dust and you're filling with jam. And if I have completely confused you, I'm going to be answering questions in a minute. So I'll take your questions in. Again, you're taking that and you're filling just a little bit in the center of the bottom of the cookie, the one that has all the lattice and the one that you have um, dusted with powdered sugar. You're then going to take that and you're going to sit it right on top of that cookie, and that's what it should look like. And I'm going to do the last two. These are so, so pretty. Um, you guys know I love things that look nice. And if it doesn't look good, then I don't think it's too appetizing. There's the other one. And this is our last one. I know my neighbors have been wondering, where has she been? Because I've been making dinner and taking next door. And I've been in my garden. <laughs> I have been really, really busy. And I will tell you, everything looks so good. I love my raised boxes, uh, my raised beds. And my bok choy, I have never had bok choy. Normally my bok choy is about this big. It is this big. It has, everything is doing beautifully. I don't know if it's because of the weather. I think it's because of the raised beds. And it's not competing with weeds. That's the other advantage of um, putting this stuff in raised beds. You don't have to compete with so many weeds. So, anyway, that is your cookie. And I'm going to share with you my first, let me be careful that I don't take this on the floor. This is the first rose from my, from my knockout roses. So I went out and I'm like, what am I going to put along on the, um, on the plate with the cookies. And there she was. She was kind of peeking out. And you know what? I love containers. This was olive oil. 
And I say this because I thought it was cute. And this is what the cookies that I baked off earlier, this is what it looks like. Now, can you imagine giving this to your mom? And if you can't, um, you can always ship her cookies. You, you have, if you have a couple of days of doing drive-by, she's nearby, and you guys have not been vaccinated and you're concerned. Um, but there's a way you can get this done. So, and if not, like my mom isn't here any, any longer, but I have a couple of elderly people that I'm friends with, so I'll take them a nice little care package for Mother's Day, and I'm going to treat myself. So anyway, that's the recipe for today. So if you have any questions, now's the time to hit me up. I'm gonna rinse my hands just a moment. So talk to Thomasina for a minute while I wash my hands. Okay, I think I am ready. Let's see here. I think this might be a good spot to put it over here so I can see you guys better. How's that? Okay, so let me scroll down to see if there are any questions. By the way, just to give you a little background, a lot of people don't know that this, first of all, this cookie originated in Austria. And people in the United States, because I think of the, a lot of the Germans and Austrians who wound up in Philadelphia, they associate this cookie with Philadelphia, but it's, it has its origins in Austria. Um, hello, Graciela. How are you, my dear? You know what I need to put my eyes on? <laughs> I'm like squinting, I'm trying to figure out why can't I can't see anything. Um, let's see, where is the cookbook, please? Uh, you can get it online at, um, on Amazon, any of the bookstores, you can order it if they don't have it in, in the stores. I also have, it is at Merrifield Garden Center, as well as the Nest in Fairfax, um, Creme de la Creme. I'm not sure where you are. They have three stores, but... And then you can always go to tuckerhillhome.com. And I see that <laughs> Thomasina, she's, she's always on top of things. You can go there and order it and I can uh, autograph it for you. Thank you so much, Thomasina. You're always, girl, you're, you're the best. Um, let's see. Any other questions? Hello, Nancy. That's my sister. -in -law. You know what? Talking about baking. <laughs> this woman can bake a biscuit that can make you hurt yourself. <laughs> she can bake anything, but she's really, really good. I just remember her biscuits. Uh, let's see. Any other? Hi, Kevin. How are you? <laughs> he says I'm brilliant. <laughs> no, I'm just lazy. <laughs> oh, gosh. If, if, if you're referring to the fact that this is a, uh, an easy cookie recipe. I look for ways to get stuff done in and out of the kitchen so I can enjoy. Can they be frozen for, for dry, dry ice shipping? You know, you can actually free, um, I wouldn't freeze them. You can take them and if you put them in like a tin or something that is has a tight seal to it, they'll be fine. You don't need to. Because when you take them out of the freezer and you have, if you put jam in them, the jam makes the cookie really soft and it's, probably going to turn it into mush. So what I would recommend you do is bake them and take um, uh, parchment paper and put in between each layer. So you take these and you line them up in a box and then you put a layer of parchment paper that'll help to keep any extra moisture out and make sure they are packed well and you can ship them that way. But they need to have a nice tight seal so the air is not there. I'm in Bowie, Maryland in Ghana, Africa. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, oh, by the way, I don't sell these. <laughs> I'm not sure if you're asking if I can ship you some. Uh, no, I don't sell these. I'm, let's see. I'm not sure if that's what you were asking me, uh, Graciela. But, um, oh, that's funny. Ghana. 
Um, someone just reached out to me from there. I'm trying to remember what it was. It was on uh, Instagram. Uh, let's see. Any other questions? You guys are so sweet. <laughs> I do love you all so much. Uh, let's see. I have... You guys, cross your fingers. I am so desperately wanting to do this in my garden, and um, our internet provider has sent some other boxes and stuff over, so we're going to be connecting some things, and hopefully I can be in my garden because it's, it's warm in the house, and it's so pretty outside. I want you guys to be able to experience what I experience every day. Um... Let's see. If you guys don't have any other questions, I am going to scoot. I don't know what happened. Oh, there we are. So is that it, guys? Well, listen, I am so glad and so grateful that you guys popped in to see me. Oh, flower type. I'm sorry. Um, you're going to use all-purpose flower, Thomasina. Yes, only the all-purpose and I use all organic flowers. I don't use anything that's process, overly processed. Um, I get the real raw stuff only because I don't like dealing with chemicals and all that stuff. That's crazy. <laughs> um, are you going to make them and send them to family and Donna? As long as they are, again, if they're tightly sealed, you should be fine. Yeah, if you're sending them, you know, a fast route. We should be fine. Anyway, it is 431. I don't know what happens to the time. I have so much fun being on with you guys. I'm going to take these cookies over to my neighbor. I have the next batch. I'm going to, of course, give them to my puppy. I'll bake him off another batch and he'll have that tonight with his milk. Um, guys, thank you so much. You, I am so blessed to have you in my circle and Please, please share with your friends the work that I'm doing. There's a lot more to come. And I am working on another cookbook, and God willing, next um, by Mother's Day next year, it should be out. It's a lot of work when you're doing a cookbook, by the way. So thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And if you guys are out and about, remember to stay safe. I know a lot of people have gotten vaccinated. But still continue to be safe so that you get to be here you and your loved ones get to continue to walk this earth. So I am so glad you're here and thank you very much and tell somebody you love them and I'm going to be out. Talk to you later.